Hello, I'm Timothy Perfect from Tukunu Software, and I want to talk a bit about DFU Blaster 3.1. We've added a bunch of automa automation tools into DFU Blaster to make it even easier to restore Mac. And we've also done some tweaks, and I'll, I'll talk about those new features. But first, let me talk a bit about what DFU Blaster is. So DFU Blaster is a Mac OS app that allows you to quickly restore Mac to, uh, or wipe and restore Mac to factory default. It doesn't have to be the version of Mac OS that it came with. It doesn't have to be the version of the Mac OS that's most recent. You can restore any version of Mac OS that's supported on that hardware. So that makes it really easy. And with one button, you can put it in DFU mode and then you can restore it. And we've added a bunch of automation tools that I'll talk about to make it even easier to go ahead and restore that, um, that device or many devices. We've also added a bunch of tweaks um, to the UI and add um, some features. Um, as well as the ability to do notifications. And I'll talk about that in a bit. So first of all, let me uh, kind of show you my setup here. So I've got my main computer that's running DFU Blaster. Um, I've got it opened up here. And then I have a Mac Mini on my side. And this Mac Mini um, is, uh, um, it doesn't matter what state it's in. And uh, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, we'll put it into recovery and then we'll put it into DFU mode. Um, and then, uh, um, so the first thing you'll notice if you look at the, the interface is we added some uh, new tweaks from DFU Blaster uh, 3.0. We've added these red capsules, these little, little uh, badges that tell you which are pro features and which aren't pro features. So the, uh, the ones that are marked with pro features are available up until the trial completes. And once that completes, you'll have to purchase it to be able to continue with those pro features. Uh, basically, the DFU and restart buttons remain available. So you can add that one button, put in DFU mode, and then the, the, the machine becomes available to Apple Configurator or, or to the Finder to restore that Mac. But if you really want the really nice automation tools, um, you have to buy the version. And even if you don't need those tools, I would, I would really encourage you to purchase DFU Blaster if you want to support further development of the, the product. So um, it, ha it helps uh, move forward and continue um, making sure that it's compatible as well as adding additional features that you might want in the future. All right, so um, let me kind of go through some of the UI features besides the, the, the pro ones is that we added um, this info button down here. So if you click on the I here, it opens up the um, user's guide or the admin guide. So it's really easy to get to that. We've actually all also added under help the same, basically goes to the same place, um, goes to the DFU Blaster admin guide. So it's really easy. If you're not sure how a feature works, you can easily jump right to uh, that um, feature. Okay, so then the next one is, uh, oh, we added a progress bar. And so one of the things that is that people wanted better feedback when they're restoring. So let me take this, um, I have my Mac Mini here plugged into the DFU port, which is the one closest to the hinge, or on the Mac Mini, it's the closest to Ethernet port. And I'll just click on DFU mode. So this is what we're talking about, one touch DFU mode. You can see it immediately went to the, the test bars um, and it's now gonna go into um, DFU mode. And it should show up down here with a, with a uh, green check mark, which it did. And now we can just start restoring. And if I click on restore, you can see in the lower right hand corner, let me put, uh, make this bigger screen. You can see in the lower right hand corner, it's, it's installing the system now. And so um, it has a progress bar and it'll show it. So that's one of the new features we added is the ability to see uh, kind of the steps as well as the percentage and the progress bar. So it's a really nice touch to be able to really know what's happening during this process. Um, we've also added in the tools menu that allows you to copy the serial number or export all the information about that computer to a CSV file. So. Um, one of the kind of exciting features that we introduced in uh, or, uh, the prior version of DFU Blaster is to get the serial number off. And you have to get that either when the Mac's in the setup assistant or in recovery. And we have a one touch button to be able to do that. So I'll select the Mac Mini and I'll click on recovery. And it will boot the Mac Mini into recovery mode and then make the uh, serial number available to um, uh, be able to export or just to copy and paste somewhere. So it's a really nice way so you don't have to hold down the power button and then select options um, and, and you don't really get any visual feedback. This allows you just to select it and then it goes into recovery mode and then it'll be done. All right, there it is. And you can see that the serial number uh, shows up 
and I can two finger clip say copy serial number and I can open up a text editor and paste it in you can see that's my serial number there um, and so it makes it very easy to grab that serial number and, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about more about automation but you can see that serial number is available um, to be able to put into your backend systems, make a barcode, um, add an asset tag. It's really kind of a convenient way to go about do it. And if you want to uh, put the Mac Mini or any machine back in DFU mode, you just click DFU mode, and there it goes. It goes into DFU mode and ready to restore again. It's very easy. Um, one of the other ni kind of nice features is the ability we added a sound so that when the restore is completed, it'll chime. And we have a very pleasant sound if it's uh, successful and a slightly sad sound if it's not successful. So it gives you kind of uh, an audible way to know if, if there's a problem. So you can go over and do something. You can see this, this is play sound, play sound when restore is complete. So if that's turned on, it'll play that sound automatically for you. Um, we also moved the set. I moved the settings button up to the upper right-hand corner, which would make it a little bit more convenient. It was kind of closer to the, where the um, the switches are, but we did some other things with those switches, so um, it makes it more convenient. It goes to the same place as the preferences, but we made that kind of more, I guess, more modern Mac applications make settings available kind of in the main UI. So now let me talk about the event script. And this is really kind of exciting. It's one of the features I was asked is that folks wanted to be able to notify when uh, there was a failure or restores completed, but also be able to push your uh, serial number up to your uh, management system to be uh, your barcode or your, um, what's it called, the uh, asset tag printer, or maybe just tie the name of the computer and the serial number to the customer's um, uh, invoice or something like that. So now you can have an autom automated way to do that. So I'll do uh, use event script. And when I do use event script, you have to select a script and we provide a custom script. And the custom script is located, or the, the default script is located in the uh, uh, application bundle. So we'll look at DFU Blaster, we'll right click on that, show package contents, go to contents, resources, you can see there's one that's called event.sh. So what I did is I copied that script and put it on the desktop, and then I modified it. And what I did was um, these two lines are in the default script, which it basically just echoes out whatever uh, is sent to the script from the application into a log called DFU Blaster Restore.log in your home folder's library logs folder. Um, it passes four variables, uh, $0, which is the uh, path to the script, um, which is nice to have. Dollar sign one, which is what the operation is, it could be restore started, restore complete, um, a, a device inserted, device removed, and so that's a great way to know what the operation is happening. So you can filter on it or or do some different operation with it. And then uh, dollar sign two is whether it's successful or failure. So it's either a success or fail. And then the third one is which would be dollar sign three, which is a base sixty four of the device information. So if the operation like uh, device inserted. Um, has additional information like uh, the um, information about the device, it'll send you a, uh, I think it's a plist format of all that information and you can parse it and put it into your backend system. Um, but for my example, what I'm doing is I'm just doing a curl to a webhook. So, and sending dollar sign one and dollar sign two. So what the operation was and if it was successful or not. So I selected this already and I made sure the checkbox checked and now let me open up iPhone mirroring. So iPhone mirroring is uh, part of uh, Mac OS 15 that allows you to see what's on your iPhone. And so I've had this app called Pushover that takes a webhook and s sends a push to my phone. And so I have it hooked up with this script. And all I'll do is I'll unplug the Mac mini and I should see a notification that says device removed. And it does. It says device removed success right here. And I'll plug the I'll plug the um, device in. You can see it should say device attached. It does. But what we really want to do is get the serial number. So I'll click on recovery. And it'll put that Mac Mini into recovery. And then it will make the um, serial number available uh, to the script. Right? So that's a great way to be able to grab that serial number and be able to push it up to your system. So you can see that it, uh, oh, it didn't put it in the recovery. Let me try it again.
There we go. So now we got the serial number, and since uh, that was sent up, sent to the script with the device attached, we could have taken that and put that into the um, backend system with the uh, serial number. So it's a great way to kind of automate that process. So now speaking of automation, let's talk about the next part, which is the automatic DFU and the restore automatically. So I, I call that, uh, here, let me get rid of this uh, notifications. We're going to get a lot of notifications as we, as we restore. Um, so the first one, automatic DFU, this was here before in, DF, in DFU Blaster 3.0. And what that allows you to do is to take the cable that's from that uh, it goes to the target device, and as soon as you plug it in, it'll go into DFU mode. It'll take whatever's plugged in that port, uh, the DFU port, and put it into DFU mode. So it's a great way if you want to put a bunch of machines into DFU mode, it's just walk around and plug it in. And oh, there's my notifications. Well, I guess if I don't have iPhone mirroring on, it, it makes the notifications on my phone. I didn't realize that. Anyway, so um, it automatically put it in DFU mode. So it's a great way to go around and put everything in DFU mode. So I'll unplug that again and uh, turn off automatic DFU and I'll turn on the restore automatically. So these two features can be used in conjunction with each other or separately. So the restore automatically, you'd want to use that when if you have two Macs, one that's in automatic DFU mode, where you go around and put all the Macs in the DFU mode, or if you want to, you can hold the, the key command, or if it's an iMac, hold the button. Um, and then when you come back to this machine running restore automatically, when, that when that's plugged in, so I plug it in, you can see as soon as it detects that's in DFU mode, it's starting to restore. So it's automatically restoring. And in fact, I just got a notification that it was restoring, which is great. So let me cancel that and um, show you what happens when you use them both together. So I'll turn them. I'll turn them both on. Oh no, let me actually this other one. Let me plug it back in. Mm -mm. And uh, since this Mac Mini is already in DFU mode, there it is. I'll just restart it. Okay, now it's not in DFU mode anymore. It's in an unknown state. It could be booted, booted to the OS. It could be going to recovery partition. We're not sure. It could be have disk. Uh, it could have uh, foul ball enabled. Who knows? What we do is we'll put D automatic DFU and restore automatically. And so now when I plug this in, it will put the Mac into DFU mode and then immediately start restoring it with whatever IPSW or whatever version of Mac OS I specify. So I'll go ahead and plug this in. And we should hear my phone make some nice chiming noises as it does this. First thing it does is it detects the machine, puts it into DFU mode. There it is. And now it starts restoring. So what did I press? I literally pressed no button. I just plugged in the machine, it put it in a DFU mode, and it's restoring it. And in fact, it just talked to my backend Oracle database and synchronized the serial number with GSX to verify if it's if it was device locked to an MDM or not. Actually, just send me a push notification. But when we're when you're imagining things, you can imagine whatever you want. So that's uh, DFU Blaster uh, Automatic Restore um, used in conjunction with, with Automatic DFU. So a bunch of UI tweaks, some additional features. Um, the uh, boot into recovery is is like one of the really exciting features. Uh, let me um, let me cancel this and show. There's one one bonus feature is uh, if you open up the show acronym hub window. So we support the acronym hub, which is a fully uh, managed USB hub, and we can put. Um, we added this button that says recovery. So now if any device appears in recovery. Um, or any device is plugged in into the, the acronym hub, it'll show up here and then you can click recovery once you select the device and it'll put in recovery. Then once it's in recovery, it'll automatically show up on the bottom part of the screen here and if you have automatic restore on, it'll start restoring. So this becomes a very powerful tool to allow you to do one to huge numbers of max in a very efficient way. And then once you have it restored in factory state, at that point, MDM can take over and do uh, automatic device enrollment, or you can use MDS to be able to put on a user account and all that other, uh, you know, pre-populate the applications and, and any kind of data that you want. So DFU Blaster is really taking this to the next level to be able to make restoring max to factory default in a very kind of automated way, um, very efficiently. So thanks very much for watching. If you want to learn more information, please uh, visit uh, twocanoes.com or head on over to the Mac Admin Slack um, for the uh, twocanoes-dfu-blaster 
um, uh, Slack channel if you have any questions, or you can always send us an email to support at Two Canoes. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you later.